I remember exactly where I was when I saw Smile for the first and as of yet only time. The movie theater? The movie theater. How was it? How did you like Smile? Do, okay, so the... I was sold on the trailer. I, like, not, I guess not sold because it looked really good, but I was still skeptical just because nine A24 horror movies, they don't do it for me mm -hmm. now like they maybe used to. You know, because it was like, okay, this isn't a scary movie. It's just a bunch of jump scares and some lame ass, you know, resolution. Right. Um, and that's why, like, with A24, it's like, this isn't, it's not like, a, they, they, they basically just took horror movies to the next level for me. Because it wasn't jump scares. It was very atmospheric and, you know. Creepy. And, and creepy. And it's like, it's, it's uncomfortable. And it's disturbing and shit yes. like that. But there's still like, you still, you, uh, it's still scary. So you get that from it. But there's also like, there's a deeper story there. So you get, you get it from that too. And it's like, okay, this is interesting. Because mm -hmm. again, like, you know, you watch The Conjuring or like The Grudge or whatever. It's like, ah, uh, there's not really... It's not a whole lot of like substance really like that. The, the A24 horror movies really felt like actual thought out films for the most part. Yeah. Whereas a lot of these other like Blumhouse or Conjuring horror movies, yeah. they feel like products. Mm -hmm. Like kind of in the way that a lot of Marvel movies feel like products. Mm -hmm. These other horror movies just feel like they're trying to make a quick buck. Yeah. That's all they ever seem to be. Yeah. Um, and I agree with your A24 Yes, uh, everyone statement. does. Because <laughs> uh, uh, Hereditary has been... Hereditary changed my life. Hereditary changed how I view horror movies. And I, I, that might be like a real like <laughs> fan or normie thing to say, but it really did. <laughs> it is such an inspirational and influential movie to me. Um, if you can get past how disturbing it is. Yeah. Uh, which is also why smile surprised me because i you know me nick and some of our friends saw truth or dare in theaters when that oh. movie came out oh, and that movie gosh. truth or dare it has also been very influential it's, <laughs> but it's, not for the same reason it's like this since i'm a comic book fan i gotta take it back here like smile is Zack not his justice league and then truth or dare is joss whedon's justice league for that's me. A, honestly a really good analogy because um when I first saw the Smile trailer, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, this just looks like Truth or Dare. Yeah. This, it, and I really feel like that <laughs> hurt the public image of Smile when uh -huh. it first released its trailer. At least that's that was my conception because I pretty much wrote it off uh, until it came out. The trailer, the trailer was fine. It, it didn't really do anything for me. But uh, the just all the <laughs> the imagery of the smiles, it looks it didn't do anything for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I basically didn't think about it uh, until you saw it and you told me about it. Yeah, when I saw it, it was it was it was such a pleasant surprise. It was very very um refreshing, and I was like, wow, like this is because. Smile, it's not, it's not A24, it's Paramount, so, like, I kind of just loop it in with, like, you know, uh, mainstream horror movies, but it was, it was very well done, and oftentimes, if, like, you and I are watching a scary movie, and it's like, okay, I would have done this scare differently, there was a scare in there where I was like, that's how I would have done it, had I, oh, that's how I said I would have done it if this was just a basic, bland, bullshit horror movie, it was right. a lot, because a lot of the scares, it was, like, there were jump scares, but it was still, like, creative and it, it served the story well and just the, the movie overall was like very very it was really interesting i liked how it was kind of this lady just mentally kind of spiraling out of control i think oh, yeah. if i had to change something i would have I, I would have gone a more ambiguous route oh so like you uh it wouldn't be confirmed that this thing is affecting other people yeah i would i would have it where it's just um, it's, she's the narrator. So like, you're looking at it through her eyes and it's like, okay, because of this thing that happened way back when, and like what you're doing now and like work can't be, it can't be like a relaxing job. So maybe it's just like, but yeah, like I would keep it ambiguous. Like, is this actually happening or is this just like all in her head? And then the ending would be ambiguous too. But 
I would I would just I would just do it like that. Like maybe like she does see a pattern, but it would be kind of like I guess the number twenty three, where it's like he's seeing he's only seeing the patterns because he's looking for them so hard. Mm. You know what I mean? And it's it's just one of those things. You know, you look for something, mm. you're gonna find it. So it would be like that. But again, like it it didn't ruin the movie for me. It's just if I was gonna do something differently, that's what I would do differently. But yeah, for me, as far as like horror movies go, this is it's a nine out of ten for me. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah. I I said it. I think I would need to rewatch it, but I think for me it's an eight out of ten. I was, I wasn't surprised because you had kind of told me this is actually a quality movie. So mm-hmm. when I actually did wind up seeing it, I was kind of expecting it at that point. Dang, I um, shouldn't have said anything. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have saw it if you didn't see it, if you didn't ah, say anything. Dang, so, wow, wow, wow. So it's whatever, but I was I was pleasantly surprised, and this is this is coming from someone who uh, edited for years. Mm-hmm. I think the editing in this movie was kind of superb. Mm. Uh, and I think it's a n- not to take away from the writing or directing, but I think the editing of this movie is really what made it work as well as it did because it it knew when to have like sound or ambiance, when to have music, it knew like how long to hold and like when to cut and like this is all very vague terms but this is all this is all i can do like on a podcast form <laughs> yeah if, if this was a visual medium uh, I, I would have more examples for you but it was just so com- competent and it really didn't try to rely on cheap jump scares mm-hmm. to make the tension or create the atmosphere mm-hmm. um it was just so solid uh in post-production and that complimented like the main actress i forget her name but she was phenomenal you told me she's the daughter of someone kevin bacon's daughter kevin bacon's daughter kevin bacon like obviously someone else but i forget (laughs) yeah she was amazing in the movie she had such good like emotional range uh like from you know seemingly stable to just off the walls and that was that was great and the writing in general it was just everything was so and i i don't want to say this patronizing or condescendingly but everything was so like solid the right the story i actually enjoyed how it wasn't vague Mm -hmm. um that i i like vague movies but it's not my go-to i would say Mm -hmm. um and uh, you know, I'm not saying I like every vague movie, but it's not it's not a trait that I tend to gravitate towards a lot of the times. Because um, for me, I really liked how it was just flat out. This is a thing. No one knows what it is. It is real. It is appearing in different parts of the world, and it is after me. Mm-hmm. I, I like like just cut and dry. This thing is happening. I, I enjoyed that because I, I was just like in it with the main character. Um, it definitely would have added a whole other twist to the story if like none of it was confirmed and like the the main character had that history of hereditary mental illness in her family. It's like, oh shit, okay, mm-hmm. uh, what is going on? It, it definitely would have been a different feel. Mm-hmm. I, I tend to like supernatural stories, so I was just... 100% on board the whole time with this movie. Um, but yeah, like the cinematography, like all the, they had a lot of really cool transitions and cool shot des- or framing, shot designs. Everything was just good. And then one thing, I think the biggest thing for me, why I'm so like hyped about talking about this movie is, uh, I, and I say this a lot in private. I don't know if I've said it on a podcast. Uh, I really, 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 I'm starting to recognize that I like stories that have a concept, but go all the way with it. Hmm. I'm really tired of movies that just have a really cool idea or like a really cool concept along the way, but they don't go anywhere with it. They don't do it. It's just like they're touting the idea as the draw, not what they do with the idea. What are some examples of that? That's a good question. Okay. Horror movie? I, I, Barbarian. Oh, yeah, exactly. Okay, Barbarian is a great example of this. Because we were talking... We saw Barbarian a couple weeks before we saw Smile. 
and Barbarian, very good movie, but the the and I'll try to word this as to not spoil Barbarian. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is a, a reveal, a, a a big point, maybe like an hour in to the movie, and it's such a cool, exciting revelation, deve- re- revelation development. But that was pretty much all they. That that was pretty much as far as they take it, and it just kind of lasts the rest of the movie. And even with that reveal, it seemed like leading into the reveal, there were implications of just something, at least to me, something massive going on. And then the, there was that reveal that was made, and I was like, wow, 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 I can't wait to see every, I can't wait everything to see where else. This goes. Yeah, I can't wait to see everything else that comes with it. But it was like, no, it's just this, and all those implications, if maybe they're weren't even any actual implications you just took it like that either way we're not going any deeper into it exactly barbarian is a fantastic um like counter to what i like about uh smile because smile uh smile kind of just gets that all out of the way pretty quickly like hey here's this thing watch as it gets worse and worse and worse and, and the very worse it gets is the very ending. Mm-hmm. No spoilers, but like this thing just keeps advancing. Yeah. And I love that. And another movie that I've talked to you about that does that is Brawl in Cell Block 99. Hmm. And I think that movie, that movie in Uncut Gems was where I really started to realize like, I really like when movies write like this, where... It's all just an escalation until, because you, if it's all going like up, if the plot just keeps thickening and thickening and thickening, it gets so hard to try and predict what's going to happen. And I love that. I love it when things, when like, I cannot guess the ending to something. Hmm. Uncut Gems, I had no idea where that fucking movie was going. (laughs) Um, Cell Block 99, I'm sure there are some people out there who uh, could guess it. I was in it all the way and it was just such a, such a, it's weird to describe this movie like this, but it was such a lovely movie. Um, okay. It, it, yeah. Like I, I love the shit out of that one, yeah. but uh smile is pretty much the same thing. Like the imagery at the end climax of that movie mm-hmm. is so effective and starting that movie out, you would not guess it would, it would go there. I didn't. I like, didn't. I had no idea, but it was like the best case scenario yeah. for what I look for. Yeah. Uh, it just really, really resonated with me. I'm with that. And gosh darn it, I agree. Yeah. I love that movie so much, man. I, <laughs> I took... um. <laughs> I, I saw it with someone and there there's like a scene with the pet that like oh. I was like, oh, but I, I I wasn't like scared, but I was like horrified though, like the, at the at the reveal because it was they had they had set it up. And then in the scene where they were paying it off, I don't know how this happened because I, I feel like I'm usually pretty good at this stuff. I had no idea like, holy moly, guacamole. That's what they were like setting up. So right. when it happened. <laughs> I almost screamed in the theater. I was like, oh my gosh. Ah. <laughs> but no, yeah, it was it was just really well done. And even, even then, like, there's still maybe not necessarily a, a, a message there, but there is, like, a conversation to be had about, like, what was going on with that main character. Mm. You know, because and I don't want to say just because I don't want to spoil it, but it was... Well, it was good. actually, I was going to say, I, I, I do want to talk about some things at the very end. So let's mm-hmm. let's do a spoiler section um, right here for the next couple of minutes. Uh, <laughs> undetermined time. Some light to heavy spoilers for Smile. L- listen at your own risk. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet and like horror movies, I definitely recommend going to watch it yourself. Yeah, this, like, cuz this it, is top is, 3 for me. It is legit like the possibly the best horror movie of the year unless I'm forgetting something. Oh, it it was fantastic. Uh, I I would highly recommend it. But uh spoilers from here on. Yeah. Uh speaking of the ending, like that was when like my excitement or 
ad- admiration for it like really peaked because mm-hmm. there's some she's basically at the end of her rope. time mm-hmm. end of her ropes uh in her old home and that shit was terrifying dude man. when when the thing turned into like the the the, the big lanky like Th- that, person yeah humanoid that and was so uncomfortable. I, I was like, I ah. did, I did not expect it to bother me, but they did something with the face, like yeah, the like makeup they used. What, what they did with the like, it's like it, it wasn't completely otherworldly or anything. It was like uncanny that, valley. Yeah, like it, it, it's like something about you generally is familiar, yeah. but there's still something off about oh, you. Oh, it and was you're so. At me, oh. You're not blinking. So like in the theater, it was kind of like. Oh, uh, like it was, it was very, and it was like bending down because yeah, it was, it was too so tall. fucking tall, dude. Like, oh, that um. was so, it, it reminded me of that one scene from It Follows with the very mm. huge man trying mm. to get in her. Do you remember that? Yeah, the, yeah, they're in the ho- the house, right? Yes, in the hallway? Uh, okay. but like basically dialed up to 11. Yeah, dude. Uh, because this, it was great, it was great, yeah. but. Again, it takes it even further with that wasn't even like the that wasn't true the final form. form. That yeah. wasn't the final form because like the, there's that one shot and I think it's uh, three seconds, five seconds where you see at the very, very end, uh, like maybe there's a minute or two left mm-hmm. where it's uh, basically possessing the main character and it's that wide shot of the main character and it is entering her body. Mm-hmm. But it's like this huge mass at this yeah. point just this mass of like flesh and shit yeah. and it's just so like uh i you watching the trailer for this movie where the, just some guy in a hospital is smiling and saying you're gonna die mm-hmm. i would never have guessed this is where this movie was going yeah. and i was just so pleasantly surprised it was dope yeah well, what was your spoiler you you had something you wanted to say that was kind of spoilery, um, like the the way she kind of because it's it's about grief basically and the yeah, way that they trauma trauma uh, trauma yeah so and the way that they because like that's what this movie is really about is about trauma and how it affects you yeah yeah so with that like kind of how I was brought up it's like if you don't let something bother you then it has no power over you so I like the ending but there was still that part of me that's like because so the way it ended was she confronted her trauma and it seemed like she had moved on so since she moved on then that, yeah, that, that fake even, out it shouldn't have been able to to mess with it that was that was her goal so in my head it's, it's like if you're if you're no longer like traumatized by something if you're able to confront it and then move on with your life then would trauma and those lingering effects like still bother you and initially it was like no they wouldn't because you moved on but i was talking to you about it after mm-hmm. after we'd seen it and you were saying like it's always going to be there it's just how you manage it so it's like okay and that's why i say like maybe there's not necessarily a message here yes. but there is like there is that that conversation about exactly the um about trauma how it affects you and how you deal with it and what i told you was a straight up line from the movie and this is another reason i respect the movie is because like it seems like all the answers or at least a lot of the answers the a viewer may have after watching it are in the movie. Like mm-hmm. the, the answers are there to the questions you may have. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, w- when you came to me with that, I remember there's a line in the movie and I think it was by the main character's therapist near like the middle or end of the beginning of the movie where she's saying, you can never tr- fully heal from trauma. It's mm-hmm. just something you learn to live with kind of mm-hmm. like the babadook you you can't get rid of this emotion you just learn to deal with it mm-hmm. and i think that's it's clever to me because like in real life it's usually a good thing like to get not your to get over trauma and deal with it means you can move on with your life but this movie flips that good feeling on its head with like y- yes you might be able to like deal with it but you still have this trauma. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be there. And it's always going to be with you. And that makes you always susceptible to this supernatural force. Like Mm -hmm. if you have trauma, no matter how well you think you deal with it, you are a target uh, of this thing. And it's like, that is so, that is so cynical. That's so dour. That's so morbid, but fuck it. That's a good horror movie. (laughs) Yeah. 
Blood on the leaves. Um, and yeah, and that's that's a reason why, because um, we had this talk too, why I don't think there is a message. This isn't a feel-good movie. This isn't a movie that you really learn anything from. This is mm-hmm. just straight up a horror movie, and I don't, and I don't think it was trying to be anything else. Mm-hmm. Um, th- it was just trying to be really strong and get get this introduce this like monster ghost concept thing uh and why it's so threatening Mm -hmm. like that that's terrifying like that there's you can't escape it if you get it you it's literally the end unless Unless, you kill somebody yeah you you basically have to ruin your life so then it's like it's it's that choice you're basically fucked you either die or ruin your life or or on the run and you escape prison but then wouldn't that be an interesting movie like it's like um, we're following like this person that's on the run from like the police and all that kind of shit, and then so you think it's just that kind of movie, but then it's like no, it's a fucking demon after me, and like da 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 da. And then like the prequel maybe is like if she didn't die at the end, she mm. did just like go on the run after she killed someone. The prequel is this movie Smile. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like that would be like um, what they did with that movie X and then uh, Pearl, where they oh, had yeah. the the in the future or present day whatever and then they have the prequel as the second movie but yeah like they make them back to back yeah yeah yeah. that'd be really interesting that'd be fast and then it's like you could low-key do like different like genres almost like uh i don't want to say like how they did the cloverfield movies but that's the only it might actually be a, a better mini series where like the first three episodes are like on the run yeah. and the last three episodes is like why are you on the run <laughs> <laughs> yeah demon got me <laughs> demon. <laughs> and, but yeah smile is Top three horror movies for me. It's definitely in my top list. I don't know how high because uh, I've seen so many good horror movies. Like oh. what? Alien and The Shining are always going to be in my top three. That's true. Uh, and I think Hereditary is in my top three. That might actually be number one because that movie like affected me. Yeah, man. Um, affected all of us. Yeah, I think so. For me, I think it would go Hereditary. Alien, The Shining, as my top three. Mm-hmm. Anything after those would take some like serious consideration. Yeah. Uh, but no, Smile might be my favorite horror movie since Hereditary. Like new. Mm-hmm. Um, unless I'm forgetting one, I don't think I am. Because The Lighthouse wasn't scary. Uh, that was yeah. just kind of like a like fever a, dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, I genuinely find that movie more, like, lighthearted and enjoyable the more I watch it. Because mm-hmm. it's just, I'm not trying to figure it out anymore. I'm just along for the ride. And yeah. it's like, oh, this is funny. This is weird. Yeah, it's just a funny situation. Um, I, yeah. <laughs> I think for me, I would say, for my top three, Mothman Prophecies. Ooh, Yeah smile and not necessarily even in this order but mothman prophecy smile and hmm maybe hereditary i I think i'll say hereditary yeah hereditary is just so fucking either hereditary or or the witch the witch is up there for me too i think think the witch is the first a24 horror movie i'd seen i think it is mine too okay so that was before i knew what a24 was okay i'm gonna say the, the the witch then yeah yeah it's a good list Thank you, bro. You too. You too. Thank you. But yeah, I think that just about wraps up our smile conversation. Again, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. If you want to wait till it's on streaming, okay. (laughs) Better watch it, though. (laughs) But in the meantime, go out there and make somebody smile.